According to NPR in 2021, more than 3 million children were involved in an investigation or other intervention for suspected abuse or neglect. This is a result of the Child Abuse Prevention Act, which was enacted in 1974 in an effort to protect abused children. Since it was enacted, this act has been amended over 20 times with its most recent amendment being made in 2019, which provided immunity from civil and criminal liability to good faith reporters of child abuse. Recently, activists have brought attention to the flaws in the system and have been advocating for reform. We spoke to people who have direct experience with the system for more insight and personal opinion on the reform. So we have seen the child welfare system impact parents and children by sometimes actually causing them harm. The system is technically supposed to be the child protection system, one that is supposed to keep children safe and healthy. But the ways that we're doing it is not the most effective. So our experience in the child welfare system comes from representing parents and children involved in um, child welfare or what's called family regulation system matters. We represent moms, dads, um, and kids in those cases. We've been doing that for about 13 years. And so that means care protection cases where the department comes in and has has taken or asked the judge for permission to take a child out of their home, but also um, child requiring assistance cases, which are typically filed by a parent who says that the their child is not necessarily following their home rules and is endangering themselves or by schools saying the kids aren't coming to school enough or that they're not following rules. And in those cases, DCF can intervene as well and children can be placed out of their home in DCF foster care too. We have seen the foster care system have really devastating impacts on the children that we represent. Right now, there is such a crisis in foster care that my child clients are not getting put in a place where they have, quote unquote, matched, but based on their diagnosis or even in a foster home. But really, it's any open, available foster care bed anywhere in the state. And so that can oftentimes result in my child clients being placed far away enough that it's really hard for them to get to their school of origin. We definitely think that there is discrimination in the child welfare system. We think the DCF annual report makes that clear. Um, they point out the disparities um, within um, their systems, both not just in terms of 51A or reports of abuse and neglect that come in, but also the children in foster care, the types of placements that they get, children who are adopted. I think we see disparities basically at almost every stage. I think the Globe uh, just literally released data um, or a story analyzing data that showed that um, the Latinx families were more likely to be investigated in Massachusetts than in any other state in the country. So that's a really tough place to be a Latinx family. And, you know, I think we have to all understand that the systems that we work in, the institutions that we have come to know and work inside of, they are laced on systems that were built during times when racial discrimination was the thing. And although many of us who work in that no longer want that to be the case, wanting it is not enough. You know, we still are infused with implicit biases and often sometimes in just saying this is the way it's always been. And so our inability to think of different ways to do it ensures that we continue to cycle through the same practices that unfortunately have been hurting families of color. There's too much to cover regarding this subject and little time that we have. In the next couple of weeks, we'll be releasing a mini documentary on YouTube with more interviews on the issues within the child welfare system. And thank you for watching Culture Shock.